Hello YouTube, this is Adam here from More Than Silence and today I would like to share this basic generative uh, ambient patch with you that I have created in Pure Data. So, uh, for first, uh, pure data uh, was very intimidating for me because it's, you know, coding and uh, seems very difficult and the user interface uh, looks very complicated. But I have to say that if you are familiar uh, with modular synthesis, then you shouldn't be scared, you shouldn't be intimidated at all because that's not so difficult. I mean, uh, I have downloaded Pure Data two days ago and actually worked uh, two nights or two evenings uh, on this patch and I know it's a very uh, basic uh, generative uh, patch, uh, but still uh, I could get used to the terminology uh, of this programming language and I think in many ways it works very similar. Uh, to modular uh, synthesis. So let me explain. Okay, so in this video I'm going to try to use the terminology that I'm familiar with from modular synthesis and I have divided this uh, patch into sections for easier understanding. So the first section I'm going to talk about is the clock session. It consists of uh, metro object. Uh, the 400 means 400 milliseconds intervals uh, between uh, the trigger signs, so it's a quite uh, fast clock and above it it has a switch which is called uh, here a toggle. Under that you have a so-called bang which is uh, uh, called a trigger uh, in synthesis or in modular synthesis. So when I switch uh, on the clock, in every 400 milliseconds it's going to produce a trigger, it's going to produce a bang. And the bang is distributed between three different things, a random 60, a random uh, 3500, and uh, two different uh, envelope generators uh, that I will explain later. Uh, so instead of uh, white noise and sample and hold, I simply use here random because uh, in pure data you don't have control voltage, instead you work with numbers. So random 60 means uh, that uh, per each bang or each trigger you receive uh, different numbers between 0 and 20. And uh, based on that, I've tried to build a little quantizer here, which quantizes the notes to a minor pentatonic scale. To be honest, that was the hardest part uh, of the, the, the whole experience. Actually, there are several very good YouTube tutorials, so you can find almost everything if your search is focused. So if you want to learn how to create an envelope generator, you will find solutions for that. And actually, uh, several solutions for that, not only one. And that's the same uh, with uh, the quantizer. I have tried a few solutions here, but not all of them worked. And actually, I've built my own one. So when uh, this object uh, receives here a random message between 1 and 60, it distributes that between 12 values between 0 and 11. That's what this uh, uh, percentage space 12 object means. And uh, this select box uh, works a little bit differently than I expected. You have to imagine those numbers as the keys uh, of the piano starting uh, from uh, an A note. So A is 0, A sharp is uh, 1, B is 2, and so on and so on. And these are the notes that are not part 
of the minor pentatomic scales. So number two, number three, number seven, etc., are the notes of the minor pentatomic scale, namely A, B, C, D, E. What actually SELECT does is that on the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I have seven uh, outputs here, which fires a trigger when the number matches with the selected ones. And it sends uh, to the last output the number which is not included in this list. And those are the numbers that I'm interested in. So those are the, the notes of the minor pentatonic scale. And uh, I have added 64 notes to that. Uh, so MIDI notes between 0 and 60. From 0 to 60, it's, it's too low. So I just uh, added 64 plus notes. And this is actually something that I tried, but it's, uh, it's not necessary. So this is something unnecessary that I have experienced, uh, experimented with, experimented with, sorry. Uh, but it's not necessary. Okay. Uh, I have done a little trick uh, with those notes that are not part uh, of the minor pentatonic scale. Uh, because I use them as triggers to randomly pitch up or down with an octave. That's why to 1, 4, and 6 I have added plus 12 notes, and 4, 6, 8, 9, and 10 I, I, have, uh, I have added minus 12 notes. And those all together uh, with the 64 plus goes to a MIDI to frequency converter. Uh, by the way, you usually have to use these Tida signs. Um, I don't really understand that, but okay. Which goes to an oscillator. Uh, OSC Tida is actually a sine wave oscillator or cosine wave oscillator. Who cares? And uh, I have used a second oscillator, which is a Sawtooth oscillator that's called a phaser. Um, to use different oscillators, uh, I mean, besides those two, are a little bit uh, complicated uh, in pure data, and I'm not sure yet how to, to make it. But I have those two. Uh, that's enough for this patch, at least. And the phaser, which is the sawtooth, goes to a low-pass filter. And the frequency uh, of the low-pass filter is also generated randomly between 0 and uh, um, 3500 Hz. Uh, this number object here is only, so it's not object, it's a number. Uh, it just gives a feedback about uh, the random number it has generated. Yeah. Actually, this multiple sign works as a VCA, and you have to use it if you want to add an envelope generator, for example. Finally, you use also the same, so this uh, multiple tidal sign, to mix uh, the signals between different oscillators. And uh, you have to be careful with it because uh, one is, is very, very loud. It can cause uh, hearing damages, so be careful with it. I have uh, 0 uh, dot 3 and 0 dot 4, and uh, it doesn't go to one output. DAC tilde is the digital analog converter, something like that. You can use uh, many of these, and these are the audio outputs actually. And uh, what I haven't talked about yet. Uh, envelope generators work also a little bit differently as we would expect uh, from a modular synth. So uh, this V-line object, uh, so the first input of V-line object, specifies the, the times and the curves. So 1 means uh, maximum volume, and the number after it represents the milliseconds, how fast uh, the volume gets uh, or rises uh, to that amount. It's 100. Uh, milliseconds here. And the second part is more is trickier because the last number is the delay. So it's after the trigger it, it is the delay. The sustain uh, is 200 uh, because you have to deduct 100 from 300 because that's the delay time uh, from the trigger. 
and 400 is uh, the release time so it's how uh, fast it should get to zero back again so uh, one and zero uh, divided by a comma is uh, the one is, is maximum volume zero is zero volume and after that you have to put uh, the speed uh, of the curve and the third number in the line is the delay uh, from the trigger that it should apply on that curve and the second oscillator works the same it goes to the uh, vca and the only other thing i've got here is a delay which also works a little bit different uh, than i'm used to but also uh, it's familiar so you have to create a buffer uh, with this common del write tilde and after that you have to name it and uh, this is the the time in milliseconds of the buffer that's the size of the buffer and there it is the actually the delay time so i set it to 400 which uh, equals uh, with the metronomes intervals and i have also created the feedback which is very easy because you have to connect the output with the input and i put uh, a vca uh, so uh, a, a multiple tidal uh, object between uh, that and uh, put it to approximately 50 percent so that's the delay feedback you can play with it you can change it that goes to the so-called mixer by me uh, and it's uh, multiple with 0 0.4 and goes to the audio so that's it basically it, it took me approximately four hours to figure it out from uh, youtube tutorials um, it's um, so, so i just recommend to recommend it to try i, I still lack uh, a lot of knowledge about uh, uh, pure data this is only my first uh, experience i have no clue for example how to create an lfo or a basic uh, step sequencer and uh, of course there are so many different things that you can do uh, with pure data not only in the field of music but also in visual arts and i i only guess because i'm also vcv uh, rec user and uh, when i create a patch like this in vcv rec it eats up all my cpu to be honest and uh, at this point i feel that uh, pure data may uses less cpu than uh, vcv rec of course the interface is is not that uh, user friendly but i will see maybe if i like uh, pure data i will post some further videos on it until then, please consider to subscribe to my channel if you are interested in generative music or modular synthesis or in uh, prog programming languages like Pure Data. Let's listen to this uh, patch once again. So have a nice one and see you, bye.